Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to read the software in an ETM. My understanding is you can swap ETMs around on vehicles if they have the same software loaded on them. In general, a NA car has a software programmed into it and the turbo cars have a different software programmed into it. And I'm not sure if these different years have different software programmed into them. When you look at ETMs to get them modified or trying to match part numbers, my understanding is from 99 to 2002, those ETMs are so similar that if you have a good ETM, you can take that ETM, program it to the software that that vehicle requires, and then you'll be good to go. However, if you don't have the ability to program the ETM, and you can plug that ETM into a car and read the software with the Vita diagnostic tool that you have on laptops, you can probably know what software the vehicle requires. And then if you have an ETM, you could plug it into the car and check the software version that is programmed into that ETM to know if it'll work. Of course, you can install it and test it and see if it works. Yeah, you can do that. However, if you already know what software is on it because you've checked it somewhere along the road or you had somebody checked it before you purchased it, you'll know, hey, this ETM should work if it's a good ETM. Uh, ETMs have different issues. I have one ETM that just totally failed. It burned out, didn't have nothing to do with the uh, throttle positioning module on it. The ETM just burned out. I don't know if that ETM is repairable or not. Uh, it was in a car. The guy parked his car to go in a quick stop. He came out, boom, the ETM was dead. The ETM opened up to a certain position, so the car was drivable in a sort of a limp mode, it would go up the hill 15 miles an hour. There was really actually no response from the accelerator pedal. The car just drove around. It was idling somewhere around 1800 RPMs. So downhill it would go faster, uphill it would go slower, but he was able to drive the car home. I took the ETM, bought a contactless module for it, which that ETM already had one because it was a Modex ETM. And I put it on, it was still dead because that wasn't the problem. So there's a couple different things that could go wrong with the ETMs. One, the software I think could get corrupt somehow. The most common thing, probably 80% of the time, is the contact module on the end of it that opens and closes. It goes bad, it wears. That's why people are going to the magnetic ones. And then thirdly, it could just burn out and fail and be no good to no one. So those are the three problems. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Vita software computer system to read the software version in the ETM so that one, if you buy an ETM from somewhere and they have the ability to program it, you could tell them, hey, program it with this software. You'll get it install it, it'll work great. Two, if you're trying to swap ETMs around from one vehicle to another, you can read the software and know if you have the right software version on the ETM that you're going to install on your vehicle so that you'll be good to go. Three, if you have an ETM that you want to sell and you know the software version, you can advertise that with the ETM and probably, I see these ETMs selling on eBay anywhere from 289 to 389 and 
they're not even guaranteed to have the software you need. So a like new ETM from Volvo, like a thousand dollars. So if you have a working ETM and you know the software that's on it, you probably got a five hundred dollar item that you can sell to someone and they'll know that it will work with their vehicle if they have the ability or have the access to have somebody tell them what software version is in their vehicle. They can read that off their ETM, even if their ETM is bad. Uh, I did it on this vehicle in particular. The ETM that I read this software version was cannibalized. It didn't even have the module on the end of it that controls the throttle plate. And I was able to plug it in. It did activate when I plugged it in. It clicked and, and buzzed. So it was a live ETM, even though it was cannibalized. But I was able to go in there with the Vita software computer and read the software version. So do know that that's a possibility. This video will show you how to go in there and read the software version. I hope that helps and thanks for watching. I'm going to read the software that's on this ETM. I chose the vehicle M56 sunroof. I hit OK. I have the ETM plugged in but not installed. Couldn't find the information so I told it to read vehicle. I think it's reread the vehicle. I hit OK. I went to diagnostics. I guess I'm going to tell it to go ahead and update. So it's updating. I'm going to see if I could hit network and find out what software version is on that ETM. I went to network after I scanned it. I clicked on ETM. And now I see this ECU identification stuff. It changes when I push the ECM, so I'm assuming this is the ETM information here. I went to Diagnostics, then ETM Test, and this is the software that it claims it has. This is what they need. I'm going to hit this ETM test and see if it fails. It should fail because this ETM is taken apart. The potentiometer is gone. I just click the test. Do not start the engine during the test. Before clicking start test. Button switch off. Ignition. Then switch it on again. Restart the electronic throttle model. Then within 10 seconds hit start test. So I'm going to cut it off. Cut it back on. I heard it. Now I'm going to hit start test. Test is only going. Nothing should be happening because this ETM is taken apart. Do 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 should be emitting peeping sounds during the test not making any sounds because it is taken apart nothing's happening but i don't know if it'll stop this test even though it didn't do anything I'll give it 10 more seconds, then I'll just shut it down myself. Cancel the test with the button there. I'm right here with the troubleshooting. I'm going to turn the ignition on. I'm going to pull that fuse out, push it back in, see if the ETM winds. I don't think it did. I don't hear anything, so I'm going to check power here at this fuse. The ignition is on. I got 12 volts on the battery. I got 12 volts on that second fuse. So I'm going to check that plug for 12 volts. So I got 12 volts at the battery. And I got 12 volts up here at this fuse on both sides of the fuse. 
Let me unplug it, see if I got 12 volts down there. I got 12 volts at pin six. Let me check with, with hitting the ground and the positive. I'm on five and six, and I do have 12 volts. With the key off, that ATM didn't do nothing when it was plugged in. I just plugged this one in with the key off and it activated it. So we're going to bolt this one on and see how everything goes. Got this fresh ATM and now I'm going to put a fresh gasket on there, bolt it on, make sure I get the vacuum lines hooked up and fire it up. Everything hooked up, back together, ready to go. Look at that, purring like a kitten. ETM light went out. I'm gonna clear this check engine light, see what that is. We ought to be good to go. He's gonna run it around the block, see how she does. Man, it wouldn't really drive like 10 miles an hour before you got a... Oh, it's going good. Whoop, whoop. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.